So I finally saw Dark October about the Alu Four story, the lynching of the four Unipod boys in Alu community back in 2012. And you know we've talked about this in our true crime page on YouTube. And I was excited about the movie when I heard it was coming out. Especially when I learned that Linda Ikeji is going to be the producer. Now I've seen the movie, I have some thoughts. Where do we begin? Before I continue, I want to make a public announcement. I am a writer. I am also an aspiring filmmaker. And since we do a lot of true crime story on True Crime Daniel, I'm also a good consultant for a story. Should anybody want to make a movie about any thing we've done. So Linda Ikeji, in case you're watching this video, you know, for your next movie, you can reach out to me. I would love to work with you. <laughs> now let's get into the movie. I'm going to give this movie kudos for the casting. They try. They try with the casting of the boys. Good casting. Another good thing about the movie is the acting from the boys. They did well. Their performance were awesome, especially for the lead role, the, this particular one here. Impressive acting. They put their all into their performance and you could see it. The cinematography is also good. Although for Linda Ikeji, I would have expected something bigger. It's almost as if they shot on DSLR cameras that could shoot on 4K. But I know Linda Ikeji can afford cinema cameras, so... I wished that was what they used more, like the red or even uh, 6K Pro. Aside that, the cinematography was nice, it was good, it was pleasant, the lighting, the... I think the production was lovely. However, the only issue I had with this movie was the story. Ah. Maybe that was why I was announcing that I'm a writer, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a storyteller, hire me. Hire me. I could almost tell that the people who wrote this movie were probably new to writing films. Felt like students who just finished from one film school or something or one film academy. It would have been different if this was an original idea. But this is a story based on true events that a lot of us who witness it are still around till today. I was about 16 when this happened and I'm still here. So it's not that long ago. And I know the story because I was in Port Harcourt at the time. And with that being said, I had expectations. So for those of us who remember the story who was around when it happened, it would be a different expectation. The only people that may enjoy this movie without any form of expectations are the people who weren't around at the time or who were still very young at the time or who lived far outside of Port Harcourt. Maybe people who heard of it filmsily and you know they didn't go deep into it and those people can really enjoy it but for those of us that know too much <laughs> there was just an expectation and it's not the movie's fault it's my fault i was expecting because i really hoped maybe i would have written and made a movie about it myself but you know i don't have linda cage's money <laughs> okay before i continue i want to just do a quick advert for one expert so you're just chill chill let me just get this through OneXBet has a new offer called This Time for Africa and it's giving out a lot of prizes. All you need to do is place bets, earn tickets and qualify for the prize draws and win prizes. As long as you're placing your bets on African Nations Championships, you're good. Use the link on our bio or on the description to register on OneXBet if you're not already on it. And use our promo code TCD to get a 300% bonus on your first deposit. So you have more money to place more bets and increase your chances of winning more prizes. Now let's go back to the movie review. For me, the writers missed a lot of chance to tell a story. They're only telling us what we already know. The writers basically only relied on the emotions that they knew they were going to get out of the audience in the end of the movie regardless. How do I put it? The story is popular, it's tragic. So no matter how wrong you go, once you get to the part of the lynching and the boys cry, everybody's going to forget that the movie doesn't have a story. And we're going to cry because we remember the incident and you know, it will get the emotions that it was supposed to. But as a story, it's one thing. But as a movie, I feel like the writers missed an opportunity to dive into the individuality of these boys. It's how I would have done it, dive into them on their own but that would also require probably reaching out to the families because i hear the producers did not reach out to the families before they made the story since it's based off a true life story but not a direct story because the names were not used per se and the community you know it's not exactly the same names that the actual boys had in real life that this one's bow but we know that they're talking about them so i can understand why they did not go with the method I would have loved for them to go. 
Now let's dive into the elements of the story. There were some parts that the film got right that I want to applaud them for. And that is the fifth person element. You know, there were like a version of the story that had a fifth person that was with the guys that escaped and may have been the reason why they were lynched. We talked about it in our own video and the movie pretty much picked up on it. That's good. That's impressive. Another thing again that they did right or that I think they tried in terms of details, they used Blackberry phones. They tried to give us the feel of 2012, that era of BB, uh, Blackberry, right? So yeah, they did, they, 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 I saw the, the details on that part. Although controversially speaking, where I did have issue with the movie again was the fact that they made the community seem as though they had an issue with Uniport boys and that is not the case. Alu community, you know, was where Uniport was. Uniport was in Alu community. In a movie, you would see a part where some people are frowning see, and those Uniport boys again, like they're always moving around. It's like, that is what Uniport is. Uniport boys are always moving around. That is basically what the entire Alu community is made of. It's made up of Uniport boys moving around. So the movie tried to make it look like the community was already beefing with Uniport boys and I had an issue with that part because that was not really the case. That was not really the case. For some reason in the original story or in the original event, the fact that the vigilante people did not know that they were Uniport boys or did not believe that they were Uniport boys was what played a role in their death most possibly. Maybe if they knew they were actual Uniports, if they were fully convinced, they may not have suffered to the extent in which they did. They actually just assumed they were random court boys. I, I'm thinking so, because the fact that they were Uniport boys would have most likely helped their situation early enough. In as much as what the Alu community did to the boys was horrible, Alu community is developed by Uniport students up to this day. If the school is not in session, the community is as dry as some people's jokes. Another thing again is the vigilantes that attacked the boys in real life were not exactly that organized. These ones in the movie had guns, they were professional. If they were that professional, they would not have done what they did to the boys. Vigilantes with that kind of power and weapons don't lynch. A vigilante that looks like this with uniform and guns will not lynch the boys no offense the people that did it were regular low budget vigilantes yeah they were low budget vigilantes you could see them they were unprofessional they were not organized so these were just the tough men in the society that basically carried it if you notice in the video the actual video it was two men doing the attack so they did not particularly have an organized vigilante group that looked like this with you know, uniforms, guns, and weapons. Nah, they did not have this. And I, I want to guess that if they did have this, they would not want to lynch. Is how I feel. In the original event, it was mostly the community boys that did the killing, community people. So those people were very, very unsmart. The movie overall is watchable. It's something you can watch to relieve the memories or to get a feel of what happened, but not quite. I still feel like there is room for another filmmaker to come in and do it and maybe do it right, per se. You know, the actual name, the actual place, and their actual individual stories. But aside that, this movie is okay. Linda tried. And Linda, in case you want to do another movie, you know, I would like to us to work together. <laughs> I'm a good filmmaker in my head. Yeah, pretty much the movie... The movie was fine. It was okay. You would enjoy the performance that the boys gave, especially this. The boys tried. They, they did well. They did well in their acting. My only problem was just the writing. The writers only banked on the emotions that the movie was going to give regardless. They did not put effort into trying to tell a story. No offense. I'm sorry. Not like I'm bashing the movie. It's good. It's just that the writers had a chance, an opportunity to tell a really good story, but they missed it. They really missed it. They were just trying to get the elements right that they forgot that, hey, we kind of need a story. So basically, 
this movie you only go in with the same emotions you might have gotten from the original event you may not get anything new you may not get any new information you may not get any new details you may not get anything else and you know it just you just gotta watch the movie and you know what you're expecting in the end and you get what you're expecting which is the lynching and how sad it is and that's as far as you'll get and that's it but it's still watchable let me know your thoughts if you've seen the movie.